Howdy YouTube and welcome to this episode of The Gunman. So today we're going to be revisiting a fan favourite video of mine and that is Top 10 Spray Guns. So it's going to be a little bit different than the last one. This video here is just going to be focusing on base coat and clear coat spray guns. Many of the guns on the list are capable of spraying primers but I do actually have a specific primer spray gun review and also a mini spray gun review. So specific primer and mini guns are not going to be included in this video. Another quick thing I might mention this time is I haven't actually broken it down with the four or so different criteria and given them a score out of 10 like I did last time. A few people criticized me for doing that. Some people said versatility is not important to them. So you know what? I've just done this one here by gut feel. I got the 10 best spray guns that I think are the best spray guns on the market. I put them all into the video editor and I put them in what felt like the best order. And another thing I'd just quickly like to say is that you can barely go wrong with any of the spray guns on this list. So just because your favorite spray gun might have got position 7th or 8th doesn't mean that I'm saying that it's a bad spray gun. It just means that for whatever reason, I think that some of the other guns might be better. So now we've got all the rules beside us. Let's get straight into it. So at number 10, we have the Dur Eco Gun 910. Now, out of all the guns on this list, I think this is the one that just, it was easiest to place. Basically because there's nothing about this gun that jumps out and says, I am a must buy. Now on paper, it's actually a great gun. It's not overly priced. It's also not too cheap that you wouldn't trust the build quality on it or anything. They are actually made in Germany, so you would expect a very well made gun. And it's what you get also. So they're actually also known by a couple of other names. Nods and Trilogy is well known to the channel and also Optima Trifinity. So it's exactly the same gun. I do appreciate that little gauge on the side of the gun. That's a cool little addition. Now getting straight on through those guns, we're up to number nine now. And as I was saying just before, that was easy to put into position 10. Now this was a little bit more difficult to put into position nine because on paper, again, this is a brilliant gun. It's hard to find a gun that's built much better than this. The only thing that really let this gun down is its price. Now they've pretty much outpriced themselves of DIY people, so people watching at home and spraying at home, um, yeah, you're pretty much not going to waste your money on one of these. There's guns out there for less than half the price that are just as good and will last just as long. Now look, those of you in the industry that need something that's going to perform for you every single day, day in, day out, nice, fast paced gun when you are in the spray booth, absolutely go hard. Look at one of these Sata 5000s, you know, uh, especially with some of the Devilbus and Iwatas, which are pretty much their uh, direct competition of the Sata's. Um, the prices on those are starting to sort of climb up there and approach similar prices than the Sata 5000. So they are only starting to look um, a better value as the price of the other guns do start creeping up. So those who are familiar with the channel will know that I do put value for money up pretty highly, if not as high as you can get whenever I recommend a spray gun or whenever I recommend any purchase. And with these guns being priced around or above a thousand dollars it's a bit of a tough sell for me to go and recommend it to most people they are a good gun and they are going to last you for quite some time so you're not getting a bad gun um, but yeah rp is where it's at if you ask me rp 1.2 for the start of 5000 um, there's actually also start of 5000 x's and they are another good gun but i've got specific reviews on them as well if you would like to go and check through my channel so i've only got two minutes per gun so we're not going to be dwelling on each one for too long we'll just get straight through them now in at number eight is the NS Iwata Supernova another gun that's pretty highly priced and you know it's a, it's a bit tough to give it this position but it's basically it fell in at number eight over the Sata Jet for the simple reason that it's a little bit cheaper you're probably going to get these around 900 Australian dollars um, and look these two limited editions that you see here they're going to be obviously a little bit more expensive but I tell you what man they are some of the best looking spray guns on the market 
they look like some kind of a phaser that you would expect to see in some of the old Star Trek movies or something like that. They're a beautifully designed spray gun and they perform quite well. So look, personally, after trying the LS and the WS, I would say that the WS is my preference and that's the clear coat. So after using the LS for a couple of months, I went back to the DV1 for base coat and found the DV1's just kind of got a little bit on it. It's just a little bit better for the base coat. Um, but for clear coat, this gun is hard to beat. It does go through a little bit more material than I would like, but it's one of those things that you've got to take a trade off between the kind of finish you're gonna get and the amount of material that you're gonna use. So if all you care about is flat finishes, well then honestly, forget about the rest of this list. Look at either this gun or even the Sada X5500 with a 1.3 in the warmer months or a 1.2 in the cooler months on the Sada that is, and probably 1.3 HD for the Supernova. And it's not really a coincidence that I do say that because they are both eye pattern fans. So that means that they're very narrow width to the fan instead of having a big wet spot in the middle, they've actually got a more even and heightened fan to them and that's why i think they're so good at laying down the clear coats very flat however if you want to go for base coats honestly this is the way to go the devilbus dv1 is the best base coat gun i've ever used first time i used this gun the first thing that came to mind was effortless a year and a half later it's pretty much the word that comes to mind effortless when it comes to laying base coats down and we've recently just switched over to stando blue water system so i can verify that this gun is brilliant for the stando blue and also totally love it for the solvent based base coats which we used to use now i've actually decided that i'll probably be doing a separate top 10 maybe we'll see how we go yeah for spraying stando blue waterborne base coat so yeah we'll see how we go and again it must seem a little bit odd to have a gun that i speak so highly of in at even number seven you know you would think oh well, he says it's so good it's the the best base coat gun he's ever used but it's in at number seven why you know as i say um i do place value for money pretty highly um but look on the other hand me as a um a spray painter who you know this is my job and i this is how i make my money I would buy one of these um, if I, let's just say, now this is the position I put myself in, right? If I had no spray guns, if for some reason I had to get out of the trade for a year or two, and then I needed to get back in, I would get myself one of these. This is probably one of the few top line uh, expensive guns that I would stretch out for. Probably not so much the DV1 clear. Again, you know, the price is creeping up there a little bit and it's sort of just leaving uh, that value for money behind for what it actually does. At the end of the day, I can get good results with every single gun on this list when it does come to clear coats. But yeah, this is one of the few guns that I would buy to go straight to base coat. I always used to buy a new spray gun. It would get Get put to the top job being your clear coat and then your previous clear coat gun would get demoted to a base coat gun however that dv1 i would happily buy that and put that straight to work as a base coat gun so moving straight on is the segola 4600 again it's a little bit of a surprise to see this come in at a better position than the dv1 but as i was uh, sorting the positions of these guns out i decided you know what this has got more versatility to it um, than the DB1 does. At the, at the time of making this video, right, there's only three air caps for the DB1. So you've got the HVLP, the HVLP Plus for base coats, and then I'm pretty sure that there is only the C1, which is a HVLP Plus air cap for the clear coat gun. I don't think they do a real, a true HVLP cap for their clear gun. Whereas if you go over to the Segola 4600, you've got the digital option, you've got the non-digital option, You've got um, four different air caps from memory. So you've got the HVLP, or it was DVR, HVLP, Titania, Aqua, and I think there was like one that's called Base or something like that. But I must admit, I've really been loving this Titania air cap. So there was this guy from Guam, and he, his name was Garrett, and he just like twisted my arm. He's like, I need that air cap off you. So 
I basically sold in the air cap, which was previously my favorite air cap, which was the clear coat one, and I think he sold in the aqua air cap as well, and then I was basically left with the titanium. I'm like, dude, I'm not selling you the last air cap that I've got. Um, so, and honestly, man, I've been loving this titanium. It's got a very nice fine finish to it. It's great for clear coats, it's great for base coats. It's a good all-rounder, i found anyway. And there is actually another upgrade to this Segola 4600 on the way I believe they're actually sending one out soon, so I'll be doing a review on that, so stay tuned for that. Again, there are specific reviews for each and every single one of these spray guns, if you do check through my channel, if you would like a little bit more information on each one of these guns. Continuing on to number five, here we start hitting the real value for money territory, a gun that even if you got one and you thought, hey, it's not the greatest, it's gonna be a handy gun to have. You can hardly go wrong for the price of this. The Vilbus GPI. Now, originally, I think they started around 250. They have started creeping up a little bit. They might be sort of three, $350 territory, but again, don't quote me on some of these prices because they will vary as time goes on. But yes, this gun does definitely hit value for money. It's a little bit restricted in the aspect of only having a few options when it comes to fluid tips. So the smallest tip that you can put on this gun here is 1.4. Now you can move up to 1.6 and 1.8. I actually found 1.6 was quite good for acrylic lacquer, not that many people use that, um, but I was doing a acrylic lacquer video when I had my own shop a few years ago, and it was brilliant for the, yeah, the 1K clear coats. Um, but yeah, 1.4 will spray your anything, basically. It'll spray your wet on wet primers, which is what you saw me spraying at the start, and then VOC 2K top coats, It'll spray your base coats, no dramas at all. It'll also spray your clear coat. So it really is an all-rounder. Um, I'm yet to actually use it for the Stano Blue Waterborne base coat. So yeah, looking forward to actually getting it um, out and using it for that. But yeah, it's always one of those guns that whenever I do dust it off and use it again, I'm a little bit blown away by how it performs. I will just give you a word of warning. This gun is blisteringly fast because of the 1.4 mil fluid tip on it. That does make it a great gun for the warmer months. However, if you are not as experienced as some, it might pay to wind that fluid in because it's blisteringly fast and you can get runs quite easily if you're not careful. So moving on to the next one, which is number four. Um, that's a and I F-160, previously known as the F-150. That is the black version that you see me using here. Now again, another cheap gun. This gun basically got a better position than the GPI simply because it has a lower price point. It is worth mentioning that because these guns use such a high amount of pressure, I wouldn't recommend them for those of you at home. So they're, they're called HPS. Now I reckon that must be something like high pressure system. I reckon that's what it stands for. Um, now I'm just guessing there, but I think I'm right, and they really do use a high pressure. So these guns here, I think even A and I recommend them running around 40 psi. I reckon you get maximum bang for your buck at around 45 psi. So you know that's like three bar. And I know for those of you who haven't used them, it might sound really high, but once you actually get it in your hand, it doesn't feel out of place to be spraying it at such high pressure. It sort of it feels right. Um, and honestly, I never read that anywhere. I just as I say, like with all my spray guns, whenever I use one, I just find its sweet spot. And that's what I found. And I actually found out later on that that's around the pressure that A and I recommend. So look, crossing out the DIY guy, how did it get into number four? Because it is just a cheap gun, but he's so handy as a helper gun. So they are made well. The only real issue I had with them was their pots. They have updated them, so they are much better. They're still not the best pots on the market, but they're much better, they're usable. Now, those of you who use PPS like me, that's not gonna be an issue at all. They're a very handy helper gun, so that's what I call them anyway. So I use them for wet on wet primers in the 1.2. Also really like using my 1.2 uh, for my blending clear or the wet bed. Anyway, moving right along to number three is the Devilbus FLG5. So so the video footage that you see here is actually cut out of a video that I put up on my second channel, the Gunman Raw. And yeah, basically I recommend and use this gun for a long time, for a very long time. Now I primarily used it as clear coat and direct gloss 2K gun. Now I had a guy asking me, hey, you know, can you show us how to use this gun with 
silvers. So I must admit, after spraying this bonnet here, or hood as you guys in America would call it, um, it's not the best for silvers, it's usable. Now if you are struggling with this gun with silvers, or even just standard silver application with any gun, maybe go over and check out that video. I'll try to remember to put a link in the video description, because that's quite a long video. It goes for half an hour, but I think I included quite a lot of information there to help people um, who might be struggling to get a little bit of mottle and, and get those silvers to lay down evenly. So yeah, look, the gun itself is brilliant. It's very well priced. The build quality is very good as well. There's very little that I can nitpick about this spray gun. Um, but again, look, it's not gonna be anyone's top gun. There's, I can't imagine anyone in the industry being like, hey, you know, this is gonna be my number one base coat gun, or this is gonna be my number one clear coat gun. That doesn't mean it doesn't deserve position number three. But as I say, those of us in the industry, look, we're all gonna want ourselves maybe a DB-1 or a Sata Jet or, you know, a, a Lotus or Lotus Edition Supernova, whatever it be. It's probably not going to be too financially viable to go and get yourself five or six of them and use them for everything. Whereas a gun like this is a great little helper gun, you know, even if you just use it for your direct gloss 2K. Um, yeah, look, again, it's a brilliant gun. Of I can't speak highly enough about it. Very capable of anything you're going to throw at it. Moving right along to number two is the Anest Iwata Bellaria. Another one which I was a little bit surprised to see get such a high position. But it really is a great gun and affordable. Now this is probably one of the, yeah, probably the only gun that I would say don't even get from my sponsor. So my sponsor is Spray Guns Direct. They send every single one of the spray guns out that you see in this video, and I'm very thankful for that. So I do recommend using them if you need to buy any spray gun, except for this one. You can find these on eBay for around $250. Now that's without a pot. You can probably add an extra $50 to $70 for a pot. So around $300 Australian dollars, you'll get one of these delivered to your door from eBay. Now, just be careful when you are buying on eBay. There are some fakes and some frauds out there. However, I have been told from a friend that the ones that you see from Japan of these NSI Water Bell areas are the real deal. They do look real. I have had a quick look at them myself on eBay. They didn't look like copies. But yeah, as I say, just do be very careful when you are buying spray guns because there is lots and lots of copies. Um, yeah, just cheap Chinese ones out there at the moment. So yeah, the gun is actually available in so many different fluid tip sizes. From memory, it went like down from one mil all the way up to like two and a half or even three mil. So, you know, you could get one of these for spot repairs in the smaller fluid tip sizes all the way right up to say two and a half mil and you could use it for polyester spray filler. They're a very well built spray gun. As soon as you open up the box and you hold one of these guns in your hand, you know that you've got a quality tool in your hand. You wouldn't be able to say that any of the guns on this list are built better than it. You might be able to say, hey, this is just as good as the Iwata Bellaria, but you'd be hard pressed, or I would anyway, I'd be hard pressed to say, hey, this is built better than the Bellaria. The only thing that really lets it down is that there's only one air cap for it. Now, I'm sure this comes as no surprise to my regulars, but in at number one is the Devilwes GTI Pro Light. This is a brilliant gun. It's been my number one clear gun for many a years now. The gun itself is actually one of the most efficient clear coat guns I've ever used. It's my benchmark, so whenever I get a new gun, whether or not it be Sada, Iwata, whatever brand it be, this is the gun that I compare it against for material consumption. After a little bit of use, I was actually able to get the Sada 5000 RP down to similar material consumptions when it comes to clear coat. I mean, yeah, very, very close, if not the same clear coat consumption. However, the Iwata WS is a bit of a clear pig. And yeah, look, I mean, it does show in the end results with the slightly flatter finishes. So yeah, if, if you're looking for OEM replication of orange peels, then this gun will definitely tick those boxes. If you're looking for something a little bit flatter, well then maybe go for the Supernova or something like that. But yeah, this gun is definitely an efficient and affordable gun, so they're not too expensive, but also not too cheap that you wouldn't trust the build quality. So they're running, coming in at around 500 Australian dollars at the moment. 
there's loads and loads of different, actually really cool looking limited editions. The one that you saw just there in this video here was actually the Gunman Devilwa, so that was really cool that they did that for me. And I do appreciate the wide selection of air caps. My personal two preferences or recommendations would be TE10 and TE20. You've also got the HVLP HV30. I find that's a bit thick and chunky. I'm not the biggest fan of that. Um, some people might like the HVLP, so at least that option's there. And you also have the T110, but you know, that's going to get you a flatter finish, but honestly, you'd be better off, I think anyway, getting your Supernova or even your Sata Jet eye pattern if flat finishes is what you want, because I just think they've got the Pro-Lite covered in speed. So just a quick mention that if you are from America, this gun is called the Techno Pro-Lite. So yeah, that's worth keeping in mind. It's just branded differently for the rest of the world. I also appreciate how they've started sending out two fluid tips. So you can go 1.2 and 1.3 or 1.3 and 1.4 if you like. So yeah, it just sort of opens up the gun for a little bit more versatility. So you might find that in the cooler months, you might want to use your 1.2 or 1.3. However, when it gets nice and warm, you might want to go up to the 1.4 or something like that. I also found the 1.4 was better for my base coat. So that's it for the Gunman's updated top 10 spray guns of 2020. Hope you guys have enjoyed watching it. Hope you also appreciate all the time and effort and planning that went into this video. Now I would like to quickly make one honorable mention and that's the ANI R150 minigun. Personally I prefer it in the 1.2. It's just such a handy little minigun to have. I use it just about every single day and it just works. It's reliable and yeah great little gun and it's also not going to break the bank. So for those of you who are watching this in the first week of it being published, so you're most likely going to be my subscribers, I would like to say thank you to every single one of you for watching. I really do appreciate the audience that I've been able to grow on this channel in the last five or so years. And a way of saying thank you, I would like to let you guys know that we are going to be giving away two free GDI Pro Lights. One is the Deville West Gunman Edition and the other one is going to be the Vigilante. So you actually did see some footage of that Vigilante. For whatever reason, Spray Guns Direct were left with an extra um, and they said, hey, we can do it as a giveaway if you like. And I said, hell yeah, the, the subscribers will absolutely love you guys for that. So yeah, follow the link in the description of this video to my webpage. Leave a comment in the comment section of my webpage. And after a week, I'll be drawing two lucky winners and I'll be letting you guys know via email. Maybe just have a look in your spam folder in your emails after a week of leaving that comment because sometimes you're a winner does get hit by those spam filters. So all that aside, until next time, get out there and paint some shit. Thanks for watching and this has been another Gunman production. Goodbye.